Hi there. Let's talk about using the mesh tool to uh, embellish our artwork in Illustrator. Um, disclaimer, I don't like the mesh tool. It's uh, a little bit unwieldy and it doesn't always do what you want. That being said, the uh, type of art you can create with it is pretty amazing. Um, here's an example I found online. Don't know who did it, but uh, if you're looking for this kind of detail and this hyper realism uh, with really controlled shadows and highlights, the mesh tool really does a great job. But you have to use it um, in a step-by-step -step process, one bit at a time, so that it actually operates the way you want it to. And uh, for this process, I've got a little demo file we're gonna work on to try to practice it and see what it does. But just keep in mind that if you try to do in a complete face all at once, it doesn't work. So what I mean is you need to start by doing the outside of the face and then you need to do a smaller piece for a nose, another smaller piece for the eye, another piece for the, uh, for the mouth and the teeth. So it's, it's a laborious process to figure out what pieces to draw and in what order and to layer them effectively so they actually work. It's not like you have one huge big mesh piece. It's like you have dozens, hundreds of smaller mesh pieces overlapping one another to make your final artwork. And a portrait is about the most complicated thing you could try to attempt in it. So uh, let's do it. Um, so what I have here is a sample image uh, of a line art drawing. And I'm using a line art drawing for this just to keep it clearer where I'm working and what pieces I'm doing at what time. Uh, this photographic style, they eliminate a lot of that line art, but uh, we don't have time for that in this stage. We're gonna stick with the line art to kind of subdivide and get what we need. So here what you have is a layer underneath, which I call color, and a top layer, which I call line art. Now the line art layer, I'm gonna leave alone. It's just there as a guide. It's gonna become part of the artwork later on. But for now, I lock it so I don't disturb it while I'm working. So I have the color layer underneath where I'm gonna start building the mesh. And I might use a few layers actually as I develop the character in the portrait over time. Uh, but we're gonna do the larger pieces first and kinda deal with that one bit by bit. All right, so what I might do to start out is work with a, a basic shape. I've also found that the more angular or complex the outline of your objects are, the more complicated the mesh is, the more difficult it is, and the lines get tangled up. But the smoother and more symmetrical your shapes, the easier it is to deal with. So since this is kind of a front on view, I can get away with an ellipse at least in the very beginning, as I kind of form where that ellipse is gonna go. And actually let me give it like a little base color. Actually, I have a swatch for this. So I'm gonna click on a swatch color. Okay, now you can see it's not perfect, right? It's an ellipse and the shape is a little more complicated than that. I could come into some of these areas and slide them up slide them down, use the pen tool to add anchor points. And I can make these adjustments as needed to make sure that that, that shape, you know, kind of fits, fits within the boundary of that line. And that's another reason that I'm using the line as a guide. And I'm not trying to uh, do this without the outline because I want to make sure that those little pieces fit and uh, I have a little bit of uh, breathing room as I kind of outline the character. I'm not gonna be try to be super precise. In fact, some of these areas like the sides of the face or the glasses that would be hidden anyways, I don't have to be totally perfect in those areas because eventually I would make another mesh shape over the top of it and that would kind of hide that shape. Now here's a situation where that angle, that's gonna create a pinch in my mesh. And so I'm not gonna deal with that right now. I'm gonna just make this kind of a little bit smoother and uh, kind of ignore it. As you work with the mesh, you get a little more used to some of these little limitations. 
Okay, that's enough of that fiddling around. I'm not gonna mess with it too much more because imagining I would cover that with the hair later on anyways. So my best advice is to make sure that before you add the mesh, you, you consider what your base color is gonna be. So let's, let's actually pick a little bit darker. So this is gonna be the middle color and my mesh is either gonna go darker or lighter but if the majority of the face is the middle color, I should use that swatch from the beginning because that way those swatches are filled in automatically as I work. And as I subdivide and subdivide with the mesh, it won't overcomplicate it. So here we go. I'm gonna click on the mesh tool and I like to start by just hitting right in the middle, as close to the middle as I can get. Just click. And you can see how the line is a little bit wonky, but because this was an oval to begin with, it doesn't have a big twist to it. Some of the lines do react a little weird, but if you wanna move that line, what I usually do is try to target again to the middle. So here's another little trick. If you hold the shift key, you can actually slide the mesh along the vector line. So I'm just gonna slide it up, try to position it in the middle take this one, kind of slide it into the middle of the face a little bit. Um, if you use the mesh tool itself, you can twist those, those back in place. Now that I kind of have a middle, I'm gonna figure out where I wanna to go to the next section. So I'm gonna kind of like split it. Go on the left and then on the right, maybe up top, maybe down below. And before I add too many, I'm gonna to try to correct these as best I can. So twist them back. Just flatten them if they need to be flattened. Shorten them if they need to be shortened. Twist them into position, slide up and down holding shift if I need to. And I'm looking for landmarks to kind of help me orient these. So having that middle mesh kind of go between the lips is not a bad idea because that'll kind of hide that shadow later on when I add a, a mouth shape. Okay, now maybe what I'll do is add something here for the side of the nose. On the side, maybe slide that across. Add one on the right, same thing, kind of slide that across. Okay, so you can kind of see how I'm trying to layer that on in strategic areas. This is what this does for me. It allows me to try blocking in color in areas I want it to go. So let's say I wanted to put, you know, like a bright spot at the tip of her nose. I'm gonna click a mesh line right there. And now I'm gonna to go to my swatch palette and notice that mesh point is still selected. I'm gonna click a bright color. Okay, but I want that bright spot to stop by the base of the nose. I'm gonna click there, and then I'm gonna go back and select the original skin color. And this is really light, so I don't know that it's showing up very well, but you're trying to contain the color so it stays within an area. And by aligning the color to a specific point, it kind of holds it in place. So here's another thing I might do. Like, let's say I'm gonna put a shadowy color here underneath the, uh, the sunglasses. Okay, so what I might do is make sure that that mesh point is selected and come over here for a darker color. Same on this side. Come over here, get a darker color. And then maybe around that uh, sunglass, I want it to be darker here too. Okay, well, maybe I'll just can I add another mesh point there? Add another mesh point here. Maybe add another one here at the bridge of the glasses. Maybe that point now needs to have that darker color, so I'm gonna add it there. Add it to that one. Okay, so you slowly, if I let go of it, you can start to see now how I'm trying to plot large areas of color first, as best I can to kind of mold to the shape of the face. 
And then maybe I'll do another one here along the side. Maybe I'll click here and add. Maybe along this quadrant, I wanna have it be darker. So here's another way to kind of speed it up. I'm gonna to switch to the lasso tool, kind of lasso these anchor points because those will all share the same swatch. So maybe I'll click on it like that. And you can see how it filled in that whole side with that lasso color. So by, you know, specifically selecting bit by bit, piece by piece, I can start to develop the face and it can start to contain those colors so they don't blend and overlap too much. Let's, let's add a couple more. Like let's say I want, um, let's say I want that one right in the middle of the nose to be even brighter. I'm just gonna go white just to make it really pop. Okay, so you can see how that kind of contains. But if I want to pinch that, like let's say I want that to be a little bit, you know, narrower, I have to add another mesh point on the side, and then I have to kind of slide that in to the middle. And then I need to make sure that I change that anchor point back to match the original face color. And I would do the same on this side. I'd click, pinch it closer, and then if I let go here, you can kind of see how it pinches that area. So there's a lot of back and forth as you try to develop the, the face. Let's say I want to do the, um, the tip of the nose now. Okay, so I need to contain this area a little bit. So I am going to come in here with a mesh and add a line. And I'm going to slide this up a little bit this one over the nostril, because I want it to kind of roll a little bit. So I'll slide those up and down. And then uh, I want to also kind of pinch down here below. So I'm gonna add another one just right here. Let me zoom in a little better. So I'm gonna, you know, slide this one up, slide this one up. So they're kind of getting contained right here in the tip. That one up too. I went up to because I'm trying to follow that overarching, you know, contour. All right. And I added that extra one and you'll, I think you'll see why. So let's say I go here with my direct selection tool now and I click on these three points at the base in between this one and that one. And then I go for that darker color. See how that pinched with that really close together line? So sometimes you have to do things like that to kind of contain it. And if I need it to stop here, I'm gonna have to add another mesh line right there. And then I need to make sure that this quadrant, and I can lasso it if I want to, I can lasso this. I need to make sure that those, they go back to the original color so they don't radiate like the other one did. can slide that there if I need to make it really more abrupt even. There we go. So if I let go, you'll see how that got pinched there. See how that kind of got contained in that little spot? Now I need to kind of lift this one up a little bit, dedicate it to extend into that nostril a little more. So that's the power of what you're doing. You're just kind of molding the color and positioning it in the area you want it to go. And it gives it kind of that airbrush effect. Now let's say I wanted to add another section. Well, like let's say I was going to add the glasses. You know, I would draw an entirely new shape. I could do it with the pen tool if I wanted to. Uh, and I would add an entirely new set of mesh lines to that, that new shape so that it's separate from the face shape. I don't want to overlap that face shape. I mean, I don't want to use the same face shape for my mesh. You know, I have to separate these things into alternate pieces. So they have their very own mesh. And to keep them untangled so you don't, you know, disturb the others, sometimes you have to make new layers or you have to, you know, lock this. You can go to the object menu and lock that mesh and then start working on this one by adding new mesh lines. 
like let's say I'm going to put one in the middle, one here, one here. So let's say I want to put like a, a bright ribbon in the middle. I'm just going to randomly pick a pick, pick a color. Okay, so not not really well done, but I think you get the idea that by separating this glass piece from the underlying uh, face. I'm able to control those independently from one another and I don't overwhelm my object with all these extra mesh lines. Now, something to remember is meshes don't work with cutouts. So actually, I couldn't do a thin hollow shape like this glass piece with a mesh. I'd actually need to do a larger piece. I'm gonna do this real fast. Okay, so let's say I did that larger piece. I'm going to make it red just so it stands out and put it behind that brown piece. And then it's solid. It doesn't have a cutout, but it's hidden by the other one. I could add a mesh to that. But if I tried to do some sort of a cutout shape, uh, it wouldn't work. The mesh would, would give me a hard time. And that's where I was talking about, you know, building up your shapes in layers or in levels going from the larger shapes first and then adding smaller and subdividing and adding new meshes to those smaller pieces as you go along, as you kind of build it up. And so I could do the mouth and other pieces like that as well. Um, but again, kind of plotting and planning where you're putting your shapes and how you're, you're using that mesh tool is what's going to be necessary. Now this doesn't stop you from, you know, further, illustrating like let's say I wanted to use an entirely separate shape on top and you know kind of like this this other sample I showed you you know I could do additional shapes on top on top of the mesh you know and mesh it with the mesh so do whatever you want to do there isn't a right or wrong way there's just an easier or hard way <laughs> all right so that's a little bit of an introduction into how you might use that mesh tool and uh, build up your artwork one piece at a time all right, hope that helps.